Hello there, everyone. Welcome to a new Let's Play with me, your host, Tim. And today, we're going to start playing the Pale Beyond together. There'll be a little bit of prep here that you can skip by adjusting the slider up here on YouTube to the appropriately segmented spot, or clicking the timestamp you'll find in the description to skip past this prep. We're going to talk for a few minutes about what the Pale Beyond is, how far I've gotten it, assuming I've played it before, and any house rules or timisms we'll be using as we play this game together. This shouldn't take too long, maybe five minutes absolute tops, I think. Let's start with the middle portion first. I have played the game up until maybe close to the end of the tutorial. I decided to stop there because this strikes me as a game that I would really want to record blind the first time through. As such, I have only played this game for maybe about 20 minutes or so to reach that point before I, I knew I wanted to record this one. So as such, I have not gotten very far in it. And I'm not quite sure about how things will work out for me, but from what and or what type of game this will end up being, but from my brief time playing it, this is a story heavy, narratively driven resource management game. The setting, what we're managing, and how we'll go about it should be explained as we go through the tutorial together. So, and anything else would probably not do it justice because I don't actually know very much about what's going to happen to me in, in the near future of this game. But I figured it would be fun for us to play it together. For house rules, there's a good deal of text in this game. It is seems to be, or is, a, indeed a story game. And I like reading everything I can. So you should expect that as well. And I think that's it. Very short prep this time, everyone. So I'm going to quickly check to see how my voice is coming out. And if everything is coming out well, we're going to trash my current game and start a new one. Give me a second. Okay, everyone. Uh, three more things really quick now that I've checked on my voice. The music here is very distant and quieter than what we'll hear later on. I'm being forced to re-record up to where I had last stopped the game again because the music will pick up quite in a lively manner when we actually get into week one. As such, I will have to probably do some more cutting of this video since I don't want to really reshoot the introduction several times until I get the audio right. So expect a, a cut when we're done with the initial meeting that we're going to have. Number two. I have a habit of reading the dialogue I will select over here. But then what the game's going to do is show it on the left-hand side as what we actually respond, and uh, how we actually respond. And sometimes there's a little more text over on the left that wasn't on the right. Or the text is slightly different than what I selected over here. So I will attempt to only read what our selections are as they show up on the left dialog box. It, it might not make a whole lot of sense what I'm saying right now. It'll make sense right away when we're getting through the very first parts of the game in like another one minute from now. Finally, for our initial meeting, where I'm going to be often choosing dialogue options without talking to you guys about why I'm choosing them. This is only because I've chosen these options before, and I felt that I should choose the same options for our first time through the game, rather than try to see how the game's going to be any different for getting different options chosen. So just know that that's I'll be making quick selections for most of this, but 
When we're done with the initial interview, and even once or twice during it, I will talk with you guys a little bit about what's going through my head as I select these options, so you can understand why I'm making the choices that I am. Alright, so with all that said, let's go ahead and hit continue, and then I can delete this save spot. Since this is now going to be my third time recording this introduction, this seems to be some sort of... Like, it saves, it looks like, for each, at the start of each week. So if I select this, I delete that. And then if I delete this, can I? No, okay, so we're back to, okay, now we're back to the first week, week zero. Okay, alright, let's go ahead and finally start. Oh, the airs be cold, a flake and white, as a sailor begs their pledge. Out in the ice, they'll stake a claim and carve a course ahead. Of glory found and forge and frost, so that their tale be spread, a hunger draws the desperate here. It's one that can't be fed. What will ye do when seal hearts break and courage does abscond? I'll do what must be done indeed, out in the pale beyond. Crew Wanted Able-bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. Glory to be had in the event of success. You're alone in the office. The tea in your hand has long since gone cold. I had rather coffee. Looking around the room, you can make out the collection of military books. On the desk is a ship in a bottle. A metronome takes away steadily. It's insufferable. The constant chime begins to wear at the patients. You attempt to stop the ticking. The needle breaks off. You leave the needle to the side. It stops. Eventually, you hear footsteps climbing the stairs that brought you here. You sit. The chair is uncomfortably large. The seat feels worn. The door behind you swings open. The captain bounds past you to the other side of the desk. Do you have all your teeth? You bare your teeth to the man. Good. You can never be too careful. The captain sits down. It's the little things you can lose people to. I've not had scurvy before, if that's what you're asking. There's more things to worry about than just scurvy. How many people have died under your supervision? For this answer... I decided that I would choose one that would be most appropriate given the other games I have played. And I have lost many people in the games I have played over the years. More than I care to admit. Can you remember their faces? I can, especially when I name them after you viewers. Every single one. I see you've already made yourself comfortable. I'm Captain Hunt. 
The pleasure uh, is mine, Robin Shaw. Should be waiting to see it over here. He nods. On your desk. What ship is that? Ah, uh, this? Detailed, isn't she? Incredibly. An old sailor superstition. I hope you weren't waiting too long. I'm told it's worth the wait. Good. There's been a lot of candidates. Some good. Some bad. Interesting mix. I'm sure you understand the need for discretion. Months of darkness. Low wages. Slim chance of safe return. That didn't deter you, did it? Good work is hard to come by these days. Indeed. A venture like this, however... It's about more than just the money, isn't it? I have a few questions. First... He looks down at his list of questions. Were you born a landlubber or a sea dog? I have only been on the ocean once. And only on a boat that's bigger than a canoe once that same time. And I was very seasick out on the ocean. So I'm landborn. These are passives from what I can tell from my brief amount of time playing that will impact how people interact with us. Some are good, some are bad. I think all can be both. I'm from the city, but made my way to sea eventually. Military experience? I like to consider myself as a tactical genius, although I, am no, I know in truth I am far from it. <laughs> I say it as I say it jokingly. I like to think that our character here has some sea legs so he won't get seasick, but did most of his military experience leading forces and plotting where they should go, as opposed to being out on the boats themselves. But we'll go ahead and say that we've had work for the royal... How do I say this word? Admiralty? Royal Admiralty. Two tours. Under what circumstances did you leave? Honorably. Well, we've no stewards to wipe your ass out here. You'd best get used to doing that yourself. Have you ever fired a weapon? We're going to say no. That we were a... Once again, a plotter? A planner? We were a strategist, but not... We didn't actually fight. No. Have you ever killed a man? Directly or otherwise? Indirectly, yes. Every time I play Id or Genesis, people seem to die. I see. You're not married, are you? I am indeed single. Of course not. You'd better not have a death wish. One must believe they'll return to justify leaving in the first place. Any less that you're doing yourself a disservice. So where are we headed? We're here to find that ship in the bottle. The Viscount. Heard of it? No. Enlighten me. <clears throat> Five years ago, she set sail the research expedition toward the Dead Peninsula. They were trying to find and study the absolute magnetic south. If they found it, I might have heard of them. She never came back. Her last known location was 200 miles south of land, presumed lost to the ice. 
then we're supposed to be chasing this ship. Exactly. I'm going to need more than rumors about lost ships if I'm putting my life at risk. Naturally, here's what we do know. Not one person or thing has been heard from the Viscount since it first left port. So we're chasing ghosts, then. Maybe it's a myth, maybe it isn't. I can assure you the money is real. Those with more money than sense want that old ship. That's the job. If I don't pick the first mate, somebody else will, and... Well, my judge of character has gotten me this far. What of our crew? Quite the mix. A work in progress. Some I've known for years. They get in on trust and experience. Others, well... They interview. You don't have a full crew already? Not entirely. A different undertaking than usual. We do have transport, though. We'll be traveling on board the Temperance. She's a beauty. Greenwood. Generational. Not many like it left these days. The Viscount and the Temperance. They're sister ships. Built together. Sent out into this world to die alone. Poetic. Indeed. I'd like to think one calls out for the other. The captain looks at the bottled ship. What do you think? I think I need the work. Well... The work needs you. Captain checks his watch. Anyway, I think I've heard enough. The captain stands up. We leave in a month. Welcome aboard, Shaw. Proverbially speaking. So I have the job. Huh. What do you think? I'll see you on the temperance. I have a good feeling about you, Shaw. Thank you, Captain. The Captain makes his way to the door, and you follow. Let me put a small break here, everyone. This way I don't have to reshoot that first part. You arrive at the docks a month to the day. Before you lies a ship. The letters on its side read Temperance. So here, we'll be able to click on different things to get more information and go and visit different places. For my brief time of trying to find out if there is anything, I have not found any, like, secret locations I can click on. So I will make the assumption that there are none to find in this game, as opposed to wasting our time looking for, for things that don't exist. Approach the Temperance. You walk the cobble to the boarding ramp. Beside is a sharply dressed man overseeing the loading of cargo. Speak to him. He turns to you with a certain expression. You can feel his eyes assessing you. A military gate. You must be Hunt's pick for first mate. I figured he'd keep it in the ranks. Good man. He extends an arm. Richard Templeton. A pleasure. You accept his offer of a handshake. It's a considered handshake. I'll be operating as Chief Science Officer on this expedition. I'm also the incumbent representative of our benefactor. Do whoever consider myself and my team at you and the captain's disposal. So, right away, I kind of want to know what the capabilities are of the people that we have on board this ship. So we're going to ask him what he specialized in. What did you specialize in, Templeton? Applied botany. So I need to get a chance to choose whether or not he joins the ship. I'm sure the captain approved of him. The captain will understand more about why we would want a botanist going to into the ice in the south. 
So we'll go ahead and just tell him that we look forward to working with him. Mr. Templeton, I look forward to working together. I expect you to be up for the task. Some of the layabouts Hunt hired are, uh, questionable at best. No doubt I need to inform you of your duties. You're second only to Captain Hunt himself. Though I must warn you that you have quite the task ahead. The rabble I've spent the afternoon sorting are the same that you'll have to whip into shape. Punctuality, schedule, a sure adherence is what we need if this expedition is to succeed. I expect you to be the organized sort. You would not have been assigned to the role otherwise. We'll be trying to play our character as a, for the most part, by the books character. And we won't accept any... Heckling, as it were. And we'll also pretend that we have not actually been around too many people who didn't obey us in the military. As such, we'll choose this answer. See, folk are known to be unruly. I will do my best to keep them in line. Uh, good to hear. Let me know when you're ready to depart. And make sure to savor these last moments on land. The less valuable time we waste here... The better. Let's go first, then, and take a look at the city before we leave. You will be gone for quite a while. It will be some time before you see the city again. A young man sits at the ramp, stealing himself for the journey ahead. Hesitantly, he begins to drag his feet up the ramp and onto the ship. Hunt's description of the ship was accurate, near identical to the Viscount, barring some modern additions. All right, everyone, it's time to go. It's been one month since I signed on, and one week since we set sail aboard the Temperance. I'm told the waters will get warmer as we pass the hemisphere, before they turn colder. The Admiralty had nothing like this. A tactical marvel, elegant machinery expertly weaved through one of the fastest hardwood ships of its day. Reborn for this mission, breathing again with life, she's simply magnificent. I can't but wonder who's fitting the bill for this. Certainly not the captain. Such exquisite modifications to the ship mustn't have come cheap. It's none of my business, really. But the question still lingers in my mind. As for its master, he's mostly kept to his quarters so far. I'm not sure what to make of our leader. I can't shake the feeling that he's not telling the whole truth. Despite that, I find myself warming to the man. As for the rest of the crew, we now, we now there are now 22 of us, including the captain. Our next port will be our last before we enter the ice, to pick up the remaining four members of the crew, the scouting team. Hunt is also keen to work out a deal on the pack of sledding dogs. The crew are a strange lot, as selectic as the ship itself. One of Hunt's shoulder sailors approaches. Captain wants you at the helm. We'll go ahead and obey this order. We don't need to inquire what for. The captain will surely tell us when we see him. I'll head there now. He leaves. Okay, so I think where we're supposed to go is the yellow. Where we can go, however, we'll have these, I guess, these images that we can go into these places. But I think we'll go ahead and take a quick peek at the crow's nest, which I don't think is counted against our time, before we head over here. The crow's nest currently stands unoccupied. The scouting team are expected to join at next port. 
You ascend the stairs to the stern and find the old captain manning the helm of the ship. Ah, Robin. Lovely day for it, isn't it? We'll be polite, since he's being polite with us. There's no reason to start off on the wrong foot, as it were. Indeed it is, Captain. Indeed. It stays like these, I make sure to do my share of the sailing. He winks. I am curious, since we're going to pretend that we've... we While we've been on a ship maybe once or twice, and piloted the, the ones we were on... We did not do it very often at all. We let the cr our crew do so instead. It's not our task to do that. Why? Can't afford to go rusty in my old age. Never know when you're going to have to get your hands dirty. He thinks for a moment before stepping aside and stretching out a wrinkled hand. Did you ever take the helm in the Admiralty? Never felt right not to for me. Here. Why don't you have a try? We're going to pretend that we did not do so. Let's try to see if we can politely refuse this. Are you sure? Yes. This is important. I really have other duties to be attending to, Captain. Your duty is first and foremost to this crew, is it not? He smiles. The ship can't steer itself. A test. It's not a bad statement what he made about the crew. It was my job to care for them. Take the wheel. You grip the wheel of the ship and feel the weight of the waves in your arms. The memory of your muscles rear themselves as you begin to move in time with the ship and the wind. Easy. There. You have it. The captain pats you on the back. Fantastic. Now try to get a sense of where we are. Get some perspective. Peaceful, isn't it? Panning and zooming speeds can be adjusted in the settings menu. He takes the wheel back from you. I think I'll drink the morning in a little longer. Would you mind preparing my quarters for the day's work? There's much to do. All right, well, let's get those tasks done, then. I don't think I'll be poking about places in the captain's quarters that I'm not supposed to. But nothing says that we can't look at everything in here. Let's start with this painting. A classical painting depicting sailors doing battle with a kraken. You're unsure if it's... You're unsure of its of any historical significance, though you recognize the ship as the galleon of Captain Hamish. On the desk, you make out a variety of papers, notes, and maps, as well as a sealed letter with a stamp you don't recognize. The desk itself is suspended with ropes to keep it safely in place. He brought his metromone Metronome, 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 with him as well. I see, though it's still. I. I don't see. Actually, I think he did repair it as well. So that's, I guess, good. And the tub. A pristine furnished tub secured to the floor, a luxury to be had on the ice. Take requests. You take a seat at the end of the room. The captain joins you. Now, let's run through our provisions before taking requests. To start, there's 23 souls signed onto this expedition, ourselves included. That's 16 free to be assigned to tasks, if they aren't already busy. The rest are deployed to their permanent stations. You are only able to deploy crew who you have discovered they must be in good health, not otherwise deployed to another post. So I'm guessing that these are the number of actions we are allowed to take. Similar to like a worker placement game. Like say... Agricola. Or... Dungeon... Keeper? 
<laughs> I'm thinking of, of a few board games where you assign people to different tasks, but you can only assign the number of them that you have pawns for. I'm guessing this is going to work that way. We'll be picking up the scouting crew at next port. The lot of us also seem to be in good spirits. The expedition will end, tearing itself apart, if you end the week with no decorum left. One of the resources we're going to need to manage. I'm sure as we assign crew to different tasks, this will raise or end up being decreasing, uh, or decreasing, and I'm sure that's going to be more difficult to gain this than to lose it. We have enough provisions for at least six months in case of emergency. If you cannot afford the minimum food rations at the end of a week, crew will become malnourished. Unless cured, the malnourished status will develop into scurvy, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of a week. And more than enough fuel to see us there and back again. Colder temperatures will increase the minimum fuel required at the end of a week. If you cannot afford that minimum, crew will become freezing. Unless cured, the freezing status will develop into frostbite, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of the week. The sledding dogs, well... There's still a matter of negotiation. Dogs will be needed to send sledding teams out to gather resources on the ice. Sending hunts out further requires a greater amount of dogs. They will rest and become available between the weeks. Now, on to work. We can choose between these two folks who are waiting to meet with us, but we will have to choose both of them eventually. Let's start with... Corvid. A sailor enters. We found a stowaway in the lower hold. Bring them in. Another sailor enters, leading a young man by their side. You know, you're not the first stowaway I've had. The captain studies them further. You know where we're headed, don't you? I do, sir. The ice. Did you know that before you climbed inside that crate? I did, sir. Ha! How old are you? You're hardly a useful pair of hands. Not true. I could pull my weight, sir. Do you know your jib boom from your bow sprit? I do. I've learned it all from my da. Bow sprit, actually, I think it's how, but that's how that's phrased. Your da. He's Ward's son. Followed him on board back in the city. What should we do with him, Captain? Hmm. Well, Shaw. Hunt eyes you up. Your first mate. What should we do with him? He's another mouth to feed. He didn't sign a contract. He is telling us he has useful skills, but we haven't seen anything of that sort at the moment. He's not staying on board. I? I agree with the first statement, although that's a very harsh way to phrase it. I think we'll choose the second. Leave him at the next stop, and get leave him with enough money to get back to the city. Drop them off at our next stop. Leave him with enough money to catch a boat back to the city. We're not uncivilized. I didn't think it pertinent to bring any money to a frozen desert, did you? Best hope the boy's father has enough to keep him going. The two sailors drag the stowaway boy back below deck, taking him to see his father in the crew cabins. And what of the father? Should we drop him off with the boy? Could be difficult to simply say that we keep him here if he likes his son. It will be difficult to... To just toss him, as it, although that's probably the least likely to cause problems. I don't think I'll decide for him, though. If he wants to go with his son, this will be a last option for him to leave. It's his son. That's for him to decide. Very well. Hopefully he doesn't care for the runt and I'm not down a sailor. Well, that matter's sorted. Have you agreed upon my conditions? 
Uh, to the point, eh? Shaw, this is Lady Cordell. Cordell's here to provide us with the kennel of hounds for the sleds. And our agreement was that she would train them up until we part ways at the nearest island, but you neglected to inform me that you were bringing my dogs through the Pale Passage. I had no intention of sending the pack to its death. You seem to have good faith in this expedition. It's one thing to ask for my whole kennel. It's another to drag them into the ice to chase a myth. Never before has a buyer been so dishonest. Never before has a seller made such a strong demand. If we already purchased the dogs, I'd like to see how far she's willing to go to try to keep them alive, as that would hint as to how much she cares about them. It also might give us a little more information about where we're going. You already sold the dogs, did you not? You have no control over them now. I have the right to rescind the sale at any time. And we are stopping by another port. I'm willing to honor the deal fully should my conditions be met. She demands that we allow her to come along on the expedition. As a member of the crew, none of this ship have the experience and familiarity and are as familiar with these dogs. If you are taking them to such a brutal location, they will need me to guide them if they have any chance of survival. Humans on board too, of course. Of course. You can see my dilemma, Shaw. Bringing on another member of the crew is a risk. But our hands will be tied. Your thoughts? This is a good answer. So we've learned from her that she really cares about her dogs, which means that she's lucky to take good care of them. But the crew may cause trouble. I would have liked to have known, and I still do not, if there are any other women on board this ship. If we didn't, oh, if we are a purely, if it's full of dudes, I would say no, despite her loyalty to to the dogs, as I don't want that type of trouble or any shenanigans on this ship. That said, we can't say no to that because of that reason. We could say this to see how if she favors money over her dogs, which would tell us more about her, but we could lose the dogs, and we might not get any others. Both of these are answers I like. This one is the one I think we'll choose, as I don't... Although we did not interview her for the crew, it would not be harmful to have an expert on sled dogs. I don't see the harm in having an expert on sled I don't see no, I don't see the harm in having an expert on the sled dogs. A good point, Shaw. He turns to her. The steel is already to your benefit. Do you have anyone on board with extensive training in the management of ruling of dogs? Your sleds are useless if you can't control the dogs efficiently enough to haul them. And I would like to ensure my dogs are treated properly. I don't feel like insulting her at this moment. That said, this might smooth the edges of her and the captain. This is a more neutral stance. I will assume the captain interviewed her rather thoroughly which is why she was chosen and her kennel selected. Welcome aboard, Cordell. Your knowledge should prove valuable. Invaluable. I'll have a room prepared for you below deck. We now have another mouth to feed. No need. You'll find me in the forecastle with the dogs. She leaves. I hope I'm not making a mistake, Shaw. Now that that's all settled, I have one more errand for you to run. Could you grab the Stoke brothers and order them to meet me up deck after dinner? Hefty lads, a red hair. You couldn't mistake them for another. 
I wouldn't mind knowing the crew a little bit more. On that same note, though, it's not my place to pry. Do you require me for this meeting? No, no. This isn't a matter of the first officer need to concern themselves with. They'll be down on the middle deck. In the meantime, you should grab a copy of the crew manifest and get acquainted with more of the crew. Alright guys, and this is as far as I had got. So, I need to go check on the volume. Because we heard some loud music at one point when we were first brought in, uh, when we first started week one. So I, I need to go check to make sure that the audio levels are correct. So I'm going to put a break here, and I'll be right back. Hey everyone. My voice sounded like it was acceptable. It was a bit loud, the music, but I don't feel like I need to re-record. If we detect another, or bump into another loud music section, after we get done with it, I will lower the music a tad more than what it currently is set to. But I think the volume levels will be okay. So with that said, let's go ahead and continue with our tasks. And a heads up that I did have to replay everything up to this point for this week. Join the figure balancing on the mast. Go to the forecastle. Back to the captain's cabin. Well, this is something I, that we looks like we're supposed to do. So let's... But I don't know if I want to actually go up there. <laughs> actually, now that I think about it. Maybe we'll just go to the forecastle. But this is yellow, which means I think we're supposed to go here. I guess this will tell us if we have the same capabilities as this gentleman to be up on the mast. Upon closer inspection, you make out the ship's photographer, Kasha Belford, balancing the ship's mast with her camera. Lining up a photo. Okay, so this is good, or rather, uh, not necessarily good, but this is interesting information to have. There are other women aboard this vessel, so it's not just all guys on the seas. Hmm. Well, if she kills herself, it's one less mouth to feed. And I'm going to assume that she just knows what she's doing up there anyway. So we'll go ahead and not, not tell her to come down immediately. We'll wait for her to finish. Maybe she's doing something that the captain asked her to do. Snapping a shot, she clambers down, only noticing you on her landing. Oh! Officer Shaw! It's about time I met the first officer of this ship. Kasha. Kasha Belford. We'll be friendly with the crew at the moment. She's being friendly with us. Nice to meet you, Kasha. I suppose there was some sort of rule against what I was doing up there? Deepest apologies, but sometimes there's a shot you just can't pass up. An accomplished photographer, Kasha Belford won the Fentler Prize, the highest honor in journalism, for her work covering plague outbreaks and riots in the capital. It came as a surprise to many that such a reputable journalist would take such an interest in this expedition. There was scarcely any chance of Hunt or the benefactor turning her away. You expected someone of her accolades to be older, more experienced. This is luckily her first time on the sea like this. If this is her attitude, then she's probably not prepared for the harsh realities of what this will... Well, then again, if she took pictures of a of plague outbreaks and covered what was occurring there, then she's no stranger necessarily to danger. Although she'll have to pull more weight than just carrying a camera here. And if she was willing to photograph that sort of thing, then she is probably a bit more resolute and stout than I'm then I would probably give her credit for it, given her youth. I'm not quite sure what this sentence, this set second sentence actually translates to. I don't know what this means, so we're, we won't select that one.
Having a photographer here will be useful to us also, I presume, assuming we make it back in one piece to document what occurred out here. Inexperience is a matter of interest, but her accolades speak for themselves. Hmm. The cold game. Picture that as a header. Let her continue. For the piece on this voyage, I'm trying to come up with a snappy name. Nobody will read it to the title sounds like the work of an amateur. We're going to remind her that this is serious stuff here. An expedition like this isn't light business. Kasha nods eagerly, but you can tell she's not really listening. Oh, right, uh, of course. It's thrilling, though, isn't it? I suppose someone of your experience finds it all boring at this point. A trip to the ice may seem dull compared to the Royal Admiralty. We're here for some reason that we have yet to decide ourselves. It sounded like, based on the answers I gave to the captain during the interview, that I chose. We did say a good job is hard to come by these days. We retired from the Royal Admiralty honorably. A very different task compared, perhaps, to the battles that we had overseen in the past. Something new for us. Something new for her. So maybe we have more in common than I think. We'll say this. I'm not adverse to thrills. Well, I hope we have something coming this way. I'm hoping to capture something right out of Kurt Darling's old escapades. That reminds me. He'll be joining us at the next port. I should get his picture at some point. Kasha holds up her camera with a sense of pride before holding it up to her face. Stand still, Shaw. Oh, we'll ask her to warn us next time. Please warn me before doing that. Oh, sorry. It's for the manifest Hunt wanted me to put together for you. She hands you an annotated document. Here it is. The crew manifest. Sailors. Scouts. Engineers. Scientists. Specialists. Resource cards. Key items. Kasha's camera, integral to her report and the crew manifest. Accordion, Grimley's accordion, a weathered instrument tuned with care. Robin Shaw, deployed, landborn, colonial. Kasha Belford, deployed, photographer, landborn. Richard Templeton, deployed, science officer, landborn. Rufus Hunt, captain, ice savvy. Mutt wash. Can I click on those? I cannot. Oh, oh crap. Something's happening. It's a work in progress. The scout team are sure to join us at the next port, and the captain's forbidden me from the boiler room. If you could ask the others to get their portraits taken, I'd be very grateful. Don't want to leave anyone out. I take it this is not something that normally occurs. I'm of two minds of this. On one hand, I don't want people taking liberties with the rules on the boat. I want them being reminded that this is a serious expedition. On the other hand, she has her own way of working, and she's not. A, she, this is her first time out here. I wouldn't want to hamper her the way that she reports. Thank you, Kasha. She smiles. I'll not disturb you of your work any further, officer. I have a few more shots I want to get before the sun lowers, anyhow. 
Safe, shots officer. Don't worry. We leave her to her work. Two Johns. Descend below the deck. Let's go below deck. Since this is the next task we have to do. I'm assuming that time... Yeah, time is passing as we're doing things. So we might miss whatever this is if we don't talk with these folks now. Maybe actually we should then. Since we could afford to have the, their pictures taken. So they get added to the manifest. Which now is this button. Killian Smurf Sanders. Emilia Corvid Sparrow. Joseph Joe Gren. You spot the large man with a youthful gait, carrying a heavy crate over his shoulder with relative ease. Oh, you're Officer Shah. He gives a bright, wormy smile. Two Johns, that's what they call me. I'm sure you'll get your nickname later. Two Johns attempts to offer a handshake, but loses control of the crate. He struggles before firmly holding it in place with both hands. Ah, maybe later. Work awaits. One available crew. John John added to the manifest. Sailor Saltborn. Descend below the deck. I hear the accordion very slightly being played. Well, let's keep going down to the mid deck. Everyone seems to be in high spirits at the moment and are getting along. Looks like they were also settled up, saddled up to, I suppose, other people that they're more familiar with. Cook first. You find yourself almost knocking over a man carrying a heavy pot. Careful, careful! You almost got drenched in broth. I'll assume this is the cook. I'm not going to apologize if he was... The... Well, I'm not going to. <laughs> we'll just ask this question. You're the ship's cook, are you not? Indeed I am. And I've got the full plate on my hands. Pardon the pun. You hear a roar from the other side of the door. Oi! What's holding you up? The cook shakes his head with a smile and chuckles, sl and chuckles slightly to himself. He grabs the large pot and prepares to make his way to the hungry crew before turning his head to you. If you don't mind, could you carry that tray of biscuits behind me? I'm in a rush. Sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm in a rush. Oh, of course, of course. You have important business to attend to. Suit yourself. Junior, where is that bloody feed? I'm on my way. Oh, that's the name of the cook. Wait, you're a junior. I? Why? I have a reputation I don't know about. The two brothers. Hunt wished to meet with you. Oh, did he? And I take it that's why you were in such a rush and refused to help out the simple cook, eh? Suit yourself, Shaw. If Hunt wants to meet me, I take it he wants my brother as well. I'll grab him then for you. He's more quick to offend than I. Call the crew for dinner? Looks like this is something we have to do. The crew have their meal. It passes in relative silence. The crew return to the posts. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. Twilight falls. Ah, the father and his son. Ah. 
We'll hear them, but if he tries to make a case for his son, we're not having him on the ship. In which case, both of them can just can be put off at the next port. Over dinner, you overhear the stowaway speaking with the one-armed man. You'll be dropped off at next port, then. Da, you can talk to Captain to let him stay, right? Can't talk Hunter to anything when his mind's made up. Besides, he's right. But I can help. You're lucky he didn't throw you overboard. When we make a land, I'm making sure you catch a trip back home. I'll be back after this. Not soon enough. Doug Ward added to manifest. Mr. Gloss. Yeah, we should, so apparently we definitely want to click on every optional thing. We'll definitely, so we can only assign crew that aren't locked into certain positions and who we have, M and whom we have met before. You spot one of Templeton's science team pacing around the mid-deck, searching through some luggage that has been pulled from a cabin. Let me look in through the light. Uh, where was it now? He notices you. Ah! Officer Shaw, correct? Dwight Glossley. Apologies, I misplaced something while settling in the cabin. A bottle of wine, actually. I won't assume he's doing something bad until I see him doing something bad, so I'm just not going to remind him of this. I'm not going to accuse any of the other sailors, either. We'll just mention this. It can't be hard to miss. It'll turn up eventually. I would hope so. My wife and I brought a bottle to celebrate with. To be saved for the journey back, of course. Well, if you find it, please let me know. His wife is here? We'll have to keep our eye open for it. Let's go into our cabin. We'll just assemble do something a little different rather than follow the yellow circled road. I love it. Small. If very small. But everything you could want is here for the trip. I like small roomy rooms like this. The ocean. As you look over the railing out to the ocean, a wisp of smoke flies past your face. You turn to examine and spot a sailor with a pipe in his mouth and a sheet of paper in his hand, overlooking disturbing waters. Looking at something? We don't smoke. We need to learn who the crew are. Let's just ask this. Or we could make small talk, but I don't... Oh, we have been making a little small talk here or there. But I would like to know his name first and foremost. Who are you? Tashi. After introducing himself, Tashi falls silent and begins to read the letter. Trying to draw a conversation from him may be similar to extracting teeth. It's not really our place to inquire about what he's reading. If it's for his eyes only, then it's for his eyes, and it's for his eyes only, and not for our ears either. You spot Templeton looking out into the sunset. As you approach, he turns to you and nods. Ah, Officer Shaw. I will. It will be some time before we see sunset such as this again. The light distribution towards the southern pole is quite the change. This is the second time that he's mentioned enjoying the final sights of something. We'll ask him if he's sentimental. Sentimental? In a sense. Templeton keeps his focus on the reflection of the setting sun over the stirring waters of the ocean. There is great expectation upon us, officer.
if Hunt is not up for the task, he wouldn't be out on the water. So I will just make the assumption that he is. And at the moment, it's not our place to question the captain. The last thing I also want to do is begin accidentally sowing the seeds of uh, doubt amongst the crew. I don't know who he's talking about, though, so we'll be a little more direct here. From whom? Who was this benefactor of ours? Uh, that is not for you to know. Not yet. Templeton looks down, catching his reflection in the ocean surface. He looks back up at the sunrise. Quite the sight. But I wouldn't linger upon it too long. We should retire for the evening. It's important for, first for the first officer to be well rested. Press E to advance to the next week. And I guess we have to do so. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, I have to hold down E. Is there anything else I can do? Can I not do that? No, I have to. Okay, or at least at this moment I do. Food rations. The food rations per crew member this week. Normal. Two per crew. Fuel rations. The fuel spend of the week. Normal. Two per... I thought we brought enough for six months for food. And enough fuel to get us there and back? Did we not actually bring enough? <laughs> oh. We can reduce it. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I don't see why we would lower it at the moment. We're going to make port, and I'm going to imagine we're going to resupply there. So let's confirm this ration. Runt leaves expedition at Orca Island. Ship makes last port. Quiddle sledding dogs are picked up. The scouting crew and Kurt Darling are picked up. The days are getting brighter as you move further south. All right, guys. Well, why don't we stop here for the first episode? We'll do two weeks per video, and we just did week zero and week one. Uh, I was, I'm was i a bit confused about the rations, though. It seems like we brought a quite a substantial amount less than I thought we brought with us. Anyway, since the game looks like it just saved, this is probably a good spot to stop as well. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.